Chinese affair and the winner there plays another Chinese player, Zhang Ander, of course having a great season. Another good performance from him earlier today to beat Lu Haishin. Ali Carter beat Daniel Wells 6-1. And as I said, Brown, Jordan Brown that is, beat John Higgins 6-3. Tom Ford beat Mark Selby 6-3. So they're already into the quarterfinals. And at the end of the session, we'll have our last eight lineup. Referee Wang Wei, and uh, now the introductions of the two players. Here's Anthony McGill. We'll talk about his cue in due course. He's, uh, of course, uh, made a bit of a change this season. And here is the seven times champion of the world. He had a tough beat against Jack Jones, who did have chances to potentially get it won, but it was a big ninth frame, which I saw before, and then he made a century in the last frame of the day to win 6-4. But he certainly didn't have it all his own way, and it could be the same today. McGill, of course, a very dangerous opponent. Well, it's not quite true to say the gloves are off, because in Anthony McGill's case, the glove is on. And uh, we will see how he gets on here against Ronnie O'Sullivan. They're playing for a place in the quarterfinals the of the International time. Championship. This Ronnie big, O'Sullivan. big event here in China. It's a full house. It's going to be a really good session, this. We've got Ding on the other table as well. But on table one, all eyes on this man, the most successful player in the game's history, getting us underway. And, of course, with Judd Trump's defeat yesterday and Mark Allen's and Luca Brussels earlier in the tournament, O'Sullivan is going to stay world number one going to the UK Championship. Fergal O'Brien is alongside me. Looking forward to this one, Fergal. Yeah, absolutely, David. It's always interesting to see Ronnie play. Of course, I'm very interested to see how Anthony gets on with this new carbon fibre cue. Jury's still very much out regarding the queue. Obviously, if it goes deep in this and certainly if he wins it, more players will be looking at it. You'll probably find a few players at York will turn up. Well, yeah, but he was saying himself, McGill, yesterday, that he's a bit undecided about it. You know, he's obviously been playing with it for a couple of tournaments now, but he's, whether he'll continue to, well, it may depend on the next few days, maybe. He also said that he was watching uh, Ronnie's first match with Ken Doherty in his room on the Chinese television. And he said he was just marvelling at how well he played. He said that he, he was a gorgeous snooker. He said uh, he wonder sometimes how he, could, how he could ever lose. So he's uh, in full admiration of his opponent. Yeah, I think when you play Ronnie, I think you try and embrace that, enjoy the occasion, and just enjoy the challenge. Every department of your game, of yourself, will be tested. Not a guy to really be intimidated, though Anthony does his own thing. But again, that win he had over Ronnie in the World Championships over three sessions, I'll give him a lot of confidence. And again, Ronnie will be well aware of that as well. Yeah, because he'd led actually quite a long way, McGill, and then Solomon actually, he was 12-11 up. You think, well, experience will pay here, but McGill made two really good breaks in the last two frames. so. You know, it wasn't just the win, it was how he got it won in the end. Yeah, in the last frame, he was 42 behind, made a brilliant 85 break under that pressure. Of course, he's such a good record in the World Championships. It's just the rest of the season, are always baffled. <laughs> Why isn't more consistent? Get more results. I'm sure he's baffled himself, to be fair. Yeah, well, it's a bit of a mystery, isn't it? You know, he's another example of a, of a player you sort of think of as a top 16 player, but he's actually, at the moment, just outside at 19. has been as high as 12. Ready to get those cues? <laughs> <laughs> well, this is the thing, isn't it? I mean, it's a wonderful shot, this, but like you say, say he wins this tournament, you know, 
people will look at that and say, well, there's something in it maybe. I was talking to Alan yesterday, obviously Alan, great friends with Anthony, and he was saying that Anthony, when he tried it, nearly from the first shot, he just liked the feel of it. Eight. He felt it was easier to get more side, more reactive. Obviously, with, like with any new cue, it's going to take a little bit of time to get used to it. Again, I'm not sure, as opposed to wood, Nine. the throw, deflection, whether it's similar or is there as much. But again, with any new cue, it does take a little bit of time to get used to. Alan was also saying you're able to change, obviously it's a two-piece, but you're actually able to change, and not just obviously the shaft at the top, but even the butt. So that's also open to experiment. <laughs> to Sean Murphy's ears. <laughs> Well, whatever equipment it is you're using, of course, you also have to be able to do it when it matters. And this is an opportunity, certainly, to get going first frame in a match where he'll know he'll have to play well. Seventeen. Yeah, just a little bit shorter than they would have liked in the black. See the back's more difficult pot, but probably more likely to disturb a few more balls. Well, of course, this could have been the, the world final, 24. couldn't it? In 2020, had McGill not lost that head scratcher of a semi final to Karen Wilson. As Fergal says, his record in the crew, at the cruise pool is so good. He was quarter finalist again this year, just lost in a decider to see Joe Wee, having beaten Trump and Lazowski. He yeah, really came to prominence with that win over Mark Selby, who's defending champion of the Crucible. Again, it's a testament to his character and temperament that he plays so well at the Crucible. I'm sure he'd love a few more turns at the Crucible <laughs> during the season. 32. You can see in here they're just Massive kick there. Actually very unusual these days to see kicks. Certainly players changing different brand of chalk has certainly helped. That's very frustrating there because he started off lovely. Was well aware this was a lovely opportunity. And Anthony's not one for showing much emotion, but you can see there how frustrated he is. Looking at the option of coming off and maybe hitting one of the ball colours. If he had a bigger lead to put the black tight on the cushion. But 33 is not enough to be trying to protect. Yellow ball. and miss Ronnie O'Sullivan, four. It's always the danger, not just trying to hit it, but even if you've got a full ball contact on there's every chance Ronnie's going to have his hand on the table. Wow. So the kick, already a massive moment in the frame because McGill was looking good, he was on reds and blacks now. Having failed to hit the yellow, he's left a chance, so Sullivan's knocked the red in, so let's see how he's feeling at the start of this match. As I say, finished off well last night, but there were certainly moments where he looked vulnerable against Jack Jones.
Eight. Couldn't really avoid the blue the way he played it. Was hoping for a better kiss. Just caught the wrong side of it. Oh. Well, he got very lucky there with that last kiss because uh, the pack was in danger for a moment there. A big groan, wasn't there, from somebody when he missed that blue. I think they sometimes expect him to pot everything. The game, I'm afraid, is not like that. Yeah, good shot by Anthony there. <laughs> Wants to be on that line behind the yellow. Lock off one side of the table. <coughs> Probably a little bit fortunate, hit it a little bit harder than they would have liked. So a strong possibility could have left Anthony a pot. Wait for a thin clip to avoid canning the other reds in the pack. The blue might be in the way of stopping Ronnie doing a thick contact and swinging round. Normally, he might play that figure of eight. Safety is swing round, which he loves to play. Blue might just be in the way. Obviously, Walls just had to settle for playing a role. Just looking for a spot on the cushion where Ronnie can't get back to bulk. The place kind of just jockeying for a position, looking to try and get an advantage. Thicker than he would have liked, Ronnie. Left Anthony this shot to nothing, to the right corner. Side on the safety. Played it very well. Then that gap between green and brown and good pace. Sullivan, as he does now in these Chinese events, he's prepared to dig in and be disciplined and focused and play the hard stuff if he has to. And he, I'm sure he will feel he will have to in this match. Trying to work out the mats. I'd love to 
not just play a good safety, but ideally if you get a red or two on the side cushion. Read that Ronnie played, it's gone so close to the black cushion. Quite difficult to play safety off these. Always a tendency to catch them too thick. You do catch them too thick. Not only does the red move close to the right, but also the white doesn't reach the ball cushion. And I think he's covered it with the black. just a little bit, a couple inches more, right directly behind the yellow. And you just have a look with the referee, has he enough to just hit the red? Obviously it doesn't, so looking at another red to the main. Safe there, just caught the edge of it. You can see Anthony obviously has a great all round game, apart from practicing with John Higgins and Steve McGuire. Of course, when he first came on tour, Alan McManus took him under his wings. So you know he's going to be very good on the tactical side of the game. Those three practice partners alone probably couldn't get any better. All three of them, all strong in all departments. See that picture as well, Anthony. Right eye dominant. Anthony eyeing up this difficult pot. Bit of pressure on it, regardless of his lead. You feel if he does miss it, he would leave Ronnie in. Good bit, you'd have to say, even though it was quite difficult.
Well, it's been a long tactical standoff. So Solomon, of course, did have the chance after the McGill got the kick. Didn't make much from it, Mr. Blue, which is why the blue is where it is now. Nicely done. So let's see. Of course, he gave away all those foul points, but there's a lot of reds still on. So let's see how far he gets here. As I say, he's shown a lot of discipline already in this frame. I'm sure memories are fresh for both of that Crucible meeting, but of course, O'Sullivan did win the other six. In fact, four of them were best of 11s. Seven. He's trying to today to reach his 139th ranking quarterfinal. Some list over the last 30 years. Shot there even with his left hand screw back with side before the middle pocket of that side then just brought it closer to this red problem trying to take it round the table there's balls you can run into so that is the end of that you would think yeah, not like Ronnie he's down this end of the table to lose position just the red to pink just didn't get low enough on it to get nicer on the pink Sullivan has had two scoring chances in this match, but they haven't come to much. McGill, of course, was in first. was a bit unlucky initially when he got the kick. When it was a good chance, he developed the reds. So it stopped him continuing. He wasn't on the black to pot it. seen Anthony's very comfortable and competent at the safety and tactical side. Certainly if Ronnie's application of discipline is lacking today, Anthony's the kind of player that could certainly capitalise on that. Winner will play Ali Carter, who's uh, played some great snooker this week. Six centuries he's made. He beat Daniel Wells 6 1 earlier. So it could be another O'Sullivan Carter meeting potentially. So this frame's still very much in the balance, just 27 in it. Balls basically all are going to pop now.
I play the figure of eight swinging around here. Where the green is, there's always going to be a big attraction to him. Could swing it enough to get behind it. Great attempt. Ding has uh, made a 1 3 4 in frame two against Pang Zhengzhou, who made a 75 in frame one. So, terrific standard already. They played two frames on table two. You could hear the uh, various applause there, one each. And uh, no great surprise, I tip Charan News in town that frames are going to be quick. He's tuning up on Barry Hawkins already. He's at 114 in frame two there. Beat Mark Allen, of course, in the last round. Steve Maguire's won the first against Ryan Day, of course, having beaten Judd Trump yesterday. Play that well, Anthony. Good contact on the red. Got that too thin, he would have pushed the red close to the left corner. But enough pace to get the red back off the cushion. You can see Ronnie there addressing the white with Tracer right hand side because he wanted to swing the white over to that side. I think he can hit the red just past the pink, but every chance of an in off or catching it too thick. He was able to get at that red, but not only was able to get at it, he played brilliantly. A bit unfortunate considering it was such a good pot. He's not on one of the colours. Yeah, it's sort of classic no man's land, really, where the white's finished. But already in this frame, he's serving notice. He's going to make things very tough today, Pro Sullivan. I mean, all sorts here, all sorts of <laughs> extensions and... <laughs> yes, two extensions, one for his Q. Of course, I don't think with the carbon fibre Q, they have a little screw at the bottom to put an extension in. Well, I presume your extension piece would also be carbon fibre. <laughs> well, it's, it's, it's a minefield, Fergal, isn't it? But he, uh, one thing I do know is he's a long way from this Q ball, isn't he? Look at all, look at all this he's got on the Q. <laughs> Rainbow. <laughs> Yeah. Big shot, this. I think he just decided to roll up to it, I think. If he can reach it. There's a lot of wobbling going on there, <laughs> but he, he played it nicely in the end. Yeah. Some sort of shot could have gone wrong. Yeah, and because of that, that wobble, as you said, that's why he didn't go for the pot. It would have required too much power. Is he sort of gathering his stuff oh, up there? O'Sullivan just played the shot. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Ronnie O'Sullivan has shown admirable patience in this tournament, but, you know, there are certain frames that we're going to test him. This is only frame one. If he feels it's going to be like this all day, that is a test. He can put back in. Yeah, very rare Ronnie tends to be in a frame that lasts more than certainly half an hour. Doesn't seem to get embroiled and long drawn out frames and this has just been good hard match play snooker Probably unlikely we get another frame like this during the match yeah, and both players have shown good patience and discipline how long that may last we don't know <laughs>
it looks like that red can just kind of squeeze by the blue of the right jaw. So, already with a good lead, McGill has earned his chance, and he has earned it, to take the first frame after all. It looked like it might be a quick frame. Initially, he was in pulling reds and blacks, got that kick, which meant he wasn't on the black, and that sort of heralded quite a lengthy safety battle, though O'Sullivan, in that period, did have a couple of chances himself. Six. So there you see it, the blue to lead by 44, 43 on. He's worked hard to win this frame, but barring snookers, he looks like he's done so. Quite an unconventional approach this week from McGill, but so far it's working. he would be anxious just to pot this red as well, put this frame to bed. Very well. I'd say that would be that. Well, yeah, three snookers needed, but he's in one, and that is that. So Anthony McGill has served notice. He's going to make things very difficult today, but O'Sullivan did have chances. A couple of scoring chances came in the end to not much, and it's the Glasgow Go Man who takes the opening frame. It's best of 11 playing for a place in the quarterfinals here in Tianjin. Continued on in Northern Ireland. Anthony McGill is the break. So, Anthony McGill has won the first frame. It took a while. Best of 11, this is to advance to the quarterfinals of the International Championship. breaking from the green side of the table but One. still managed to leave the red out always appears more difficult playing the shot from that side more traditional as the other side get to play it and see it more often but Ronnie played it well as you said David to be anxious to kind of change the rhythm and passion of the game Not always something you can force. It's a more comfortable playing a quicker, more open game. But what we saw in Shanghai, where of course he did win, that was a big invitation event earlier this season, and we've seen it this week as well. Is he does produce sort of these bursts quite often, a couple of a couple of three frames in a row with big breaks. At other times, he's quieter in matches. But if he can do that, obviously then. You have a chance to really make an impact. It's had already five centuries in the tournament. A couple of shots ago, could have easily been tempted to pot the blue and hit the pink from the face and split them, but doesn't tend to play that shot as much as he used to. I think he feels it's a bit more of a risk, a bit more of a gamble. Could go wrong. For a cannon in the end red here. Would have liked to be a little bit low on this red and pot and it couldn't actually split the pack. Twenty-six. Another uncharacteristic from Ronnie to be straight would have liked to be in parallel on the black could have went into them. Different 
course of attack now. Play that lovely there. 33. Bottom left hand side to come over for the red. Thirty-four. If it had an angle on the pink, that would have been an option to go into them. <laughs> Having much angle played him very well. Forty-one. Just desperate to see Does that red pass into the middle. And if so, can he get position for colour? Well, I did say, didn't I? You never know what sort of frame you're going to get. We had to a 35-minute opener. This could be blink of an eye stuff because he's got them where he wants them now. The finest break builder the sport's ever seen. 47. And as good a tactician as he is. Five. He's definitely less likely these days to play a big power shot from blue into the pack. Certainly more controlled. Trying to split the pack usually from reds. And then when he needed a big power shot from the black, played it beautifully. 63. Let the cue do the work. Didn't force it. A great response from the white ball to split the pack. Well, here we are already at frame ball. As ever though, wants to kill this off properly. McGill will come back if he misses this red. He's not missed it, so one each. Game well and truly on. Game just highlights at this level the importance of the break-off. I mentioned a couple of times this week. But there's a classic situation. Anthony's battled hard for 35 minutes to win a frame. And more or less, he wouldn't say giving it away. I see need to do a lot of work, but I need enough to earn this opportunity. Yeah, to be fair to McGill, I mean, he, he looked like he was going to win the first frame with a big break. He just had that kick and then, you know, things got a bit drawn out. It's been a high quality all round in all areas of the game so far. Yeah, that's certainly good signs for Sullivan fans. We've seen the application and discipline he showed in the first frame. And we've obviously seen his class here. And when he's hitting the ball, his touch and feel. Just sets it beautifully for the rest of the match. This red for his sixth century of the tournament so far. And even though it's only frame two, it was a timely one because that first Reminding everybody. 120. Yeah, we've seen it many times, but it's still pretty spellbinding. Just controlled this break so well. 133. An emphatic total clearance from Ronnie O'Sullivan, career century number 1,224 to level at one each. Also has been knocked out. If he does win, or whoever wins, they play Ali Carter. This is the half of the draw that includes as well Zhang Ander. He plays Ding, Jung Wee or Pang Jung Su. Pang on the cusp there of a 2-1 lead. Top half, Jordan Brown beat John Higgins earlier. 
And he'll play Steve Maguire, Steve Maguire or Ryan Dates. 2 0 to Maguire there. And Tom Ford had a great one over Mark Selby. 6 3. He plays Barry Hawkins or Tep Chire and New. And Tep Chire and New is 3 0 up. A couple of uh, more people coming in. It's a packed house here. Great atmosphere in this big arena. The Tianjin People's Stadium. It's also been noticeable this season, the tournaments in China, the crowds are a lot closer to the table, which just adds to the atmosphere. In previous years, since we just the advertising hoarding seemed to take prominence. So, a moment of O'Sullivan magic has levelled up at one all. Break. Both end reds have le left Anthony with a possible pot. Just coming down there, he plays this red to left corner. Can he leave the white low on the black? Possibly leave. Yeah, great table knowledge, Anthony, as we've seen in Northern Ireland Open when he needed three snookers and a respot to win a frame to stay in the match against young Robbie McGuigan. Obviously, going to be more difficult to get the snookers against, against Ronnie, but. We give it his full attention. Just while we watch this, Ding uh, and Pang are 2 2. Ding's won the fourth frame there. Barry Hawkins has won the fourth against Tepchire and New, but it's 3 1 to Tepchire and uh, 2 1 Steve Maguire over Ryan Day. <laughs> Referee laying down the law to someone there in the, in the audience. Whether it will make any difference, we'll see. Can O'Sullivan put the frame away here? Not quite. He's just a little bit fearful, maybe getting a double clip, double kiss on this red if he tries to play up and down. He was right to be fearful. So again, O'Sullivan with a chance to put this away. Good signs, I think. Sullivan supporters here. Chasing down a 40th ranking title. Six. It would be his first since the World Championship 2022. Well, he's missed that one, but the damage has been done. He wasn't impressed with that, was he? But he's won the frame. And he leads 2-1 would want to come before the interval. So McGill won a lengthy opening frame. O'Sullivan doesn't look happy, does he? But he is in front 2-1. Running 2-1, he won the first frame. It's quite lengthy. O'Sullivan made 133 and then played pretty well overall in the third frame as well. So you can see some people sneaking a couple of pictures there in the audience. 
I was wondering would Ronnie be tempted maybe to have a shot with Anthony's cue while he wasn't there. Oh. Another, another sneaky picture being taken there. <laughs> so McGill returns, and this is the last frame before the mid session break. <laughs> There is a bit of noise because table two is on an interval. But also, there's, it's a full house, which is great. Quite careless there from Ronnie. As he hit the red far too hard. Anthony shouldn't have been able to have any sort of a pot when he came to the table. Again, okay, cue that One. lovely. Well, the one thing he's not done yet, he scored himself. It's been sort of bits and pieces, certainly the frame he won. So let's see if that can change here. You've got to think the best way, the best chance to beat Ronnie O'Sullivan is not allow him to the table. <laughs> so to do that, you need to be making the breaks yourself. It's only since he got this new cue that Anthony started wearing the glove. Tend to cause a little bit of friction as the cue is going back and forth and his finger and thumb. Deliberately left himself low on this red. Pot it. Disturb a few more. Played well, was able to pot it, disturb, and maintain control for the black. See the delayed reaction on the white there before this. Screw took effect. It's noticeable also when he's playing this kind of a softer noise when he hits the white. Thirty-one. 
He had a great junior career, as in common with a lot of the, the players, of course, made it to the top of the pro ranks. But in Scotland, he won the national title at every age division. And he played at the Crucible, actually, when he was 15. He played in junior pop black. Got to play a frame in the arena. Must have been wonderful experience just to get a taste 59. of that. And persuade him to keep working hard so that when he turned pro, he could make the most of himself. It is a bit of a mystery, though, why you know that crucible form that he seems to show every year doesn't always appear in other tournaments. 46. Yeah, I'm sure it's a cause of frustration for him. See, he's such a hard worker, works hard at his games, great practice partners. Dedicated to the game. He felt 47. sure with his game and personality, he'd be well suited to consistency. That hasn't been the case yet. Well, the good news is he will be at the Scottish Open, his home event. He had to drive 600 miles to Leicester to qualify, <laughs> but he did do. So he'll be in Edinburgh, which is probably about 20 minutes from where he lives in December. Fifty two. Fifty three. Short of pace there. I'd like to be a few inches over. A lot more difficult and also position to play. Excellent shot there from Anthony. Not just the pot, which was difficult, but they also judged the cannon on the red to take it out. Particularly, as you can see, it was awkward queuing. Hard to get settled on the table. And he's taken these very well. First challenge when you play, 61. Ronnie, is to get in, some, land some early blows, stay with him, and then try and take it towards the end of the match. Yeah, and, and as we said, it's important as well to, to score. It's not con all be sort of tactical stuff. The, the first frame went that way just by sort of circumstance, but he knows he'll have to make these breaks if he's going to stand a chance. And it looks like he's made one sufficient in this frame. So 67. as long as he pops this black, it should be 2-2 two -two at the interval. It was a good blacky potty, but they were actually cheering ding <laughs> and pang. They're coming back on table two to restart. Wasn't that good? <laughs> but this is, I mean, I mentioned he had to go to Leicester to qualify for a tournament in Scotland. You know, I'm, I'm guessing there wasn't a big crowd there. This is more like it. He's missed the cannon there. He wants to make a century. But to be back out playing O'Sullivan in a big arena, in a big tournament, this is going to inspire anybody, you would feel. As I say, he's disappointed not to make the century, but 82 was a good break from McGill, and it means that they go to the interval all square. It's been an interesting start, a tactical first frame. I know Sullivan total clearance. He won the third as well. McGill dominated the fourth. Best of 11 for a place in the quarterfinals, and they're all square at 2-2. Two -two.
So the second half of this fascinating match, Ronnie O'Sullivan led 2-1, Anthony McGill made an 82 break. O'Sullivan had made 133 in frame two. Two each, best of 11, first to six for a quarter final spot against Ali Carter here tomorrow. And it's worth saying, if O'Sullivan can win this match and beat Carter, the semis are, are two session matches, and the final well, as well, of course, is that you do sense if he could get to the, the longer matches, he's going to be hard to stop. But he's not won. The yeah, if they could continue to win their matches, Ronnie playing Ding, the two session semi final would be fantastic for the crowds over there. Disaster there for Anthony, not just missing the red by a bit. All the reds getting scattered. Well, it was one of those shots you weren't quite sure where to look. The reds <laughs> were going everywhere, and, and what a gift it seems for O'Sullivan. Yeah, and we said at the start of the match that we felt Ronnie would have to work for his chances, and so far he, he has. Anthony's played very well. But a little bit frustrating. Come back after the interval then to give Ronnie such one. an easy chance not just the first red where the other balls are the blacks available i don't think it's unrealistic to expect ronnie could win the frame from here six First opportunity he got to get on that red, he took it just to free the path for the black. Not just putting it, but position to play from the black. Well, meanwhile, it's now 4 1 to Tepchire and New against Barry Hawkins. So, of course, Hawkins has been in terrific form this season, but Tepchire has already beaten Mark Allen and going well there. Steve Maguire, Ryan Day 2-2 in their match. In fact, to Maguire, as I say that, has just gone 3-2 up. As I say, it looked like a gift when he came to the table. It's up to him to make it pay, but what a chance. He's already made a 1-3-3 in frame two. Always nice to watch him when he's in amongst the balls like this. Keeps it so simple. Always seems like the white travels the shortest possible distance. Never seems to be close to the side cushion. 31. In the middle of the table. Thereby making the pot and also the position play so much easier. Scanning the table, aware of where all the balls are, how he solves the puzzle of working, working around the table. 37. unusual for running there not to be perfect on the blue from such a simple red 40. Still the green there with this red over the pocket Forty one. yeah I mean I think some people feel he's at an advantage always playing on the main table but you can look at it the opposite way he's under a bit of pressure to always perform he's always centre stage he's always the centre of attention and that presents its own challenge I think there's no hiding place for him at tournaments. 
45. There's no sort of you know, coming through under the radar. Quite the opposite. 46. That little flick on the red there, just straight in the black, just coming across to see exactly where he wants the white to be for the next red. Three. Hit that as well as he would have liked. Just off straight, didn't get enough left hand side to get back out on the table. Still was able to pot the red, but you just see, just starting to lose control of the white. Ronnie Sullivan, 54. Well, it's, I know McGill snookered as he comes to the table, but it's a definite reprieve for him because when he left the initial chance and as he was watching O'Sullivan, he must have thought, it's frame done. It's not yet. Still 75 on, even though he's snookered on all red. Little shot from Anthony there would have been very easy to hit that a little bit too hard. Push a red or two on for Ronnie. <coughs> yeah, obviously, he's just spotted something on the cue ball there. He was going to let it go, but. Obviously bothered him enough want to stop. Important here with the safety shot to get a good white and not just a good white, trying to push a red close to the corner pocket. Left this red. Possibly could have excused Ronnie there if he didn't go for that yellow. Would have been some players might have just tucked him up with a 55 point lead. He never turns down a chance to try and win the frame. Which he should do if he pots this black. So it wasn't one visit, but he got the second chance and he's made the most of it. Twelve. I feel it's very important this match that Anthony doesn't let Ronnie get a two frame lead. Nineteen. Not necessarily that would have affected him 20. or he'd be disheartened to just could end up simply running out of time. Really fantastic front runner. 27. Just gets stronger and stronger. Never looks over his shoulder as opponent. 28. Yes, McGill can't afford to hand. 
openings clearly, which has happened a couple of times in this match. Certainly at the start of this frame. 35. I always feel, Ronnie, that the standards are higher than the scoreboard. 36. So when he's a big lead, or even if he's behind, commits to playing the right shot the right way. Over the course of a season and career, odds are going to be in your favour. 43. Yes, I mean, 46. it's been, to say the least, an eventful career. I was going to say he could write a book about it. O'Sullivan himself has written three. <laughs> but what he's always had is respect for the actual 12 by 6, the game itself. And we've seen that today. Even 50. when he broke down on 54, he just accepted it, played the snooker, waited for another chance, which he's now taken. So 54 was the initial break. Sixty-eight at the second time of asking. And O'Sullivan goes back in front at 3-2. Three more frames needed to reach the court. Against Anthony McGill, International Championship, last 16. Anthony McGill to break. So, as Fergal said, McGill can't really afford for O'Sullivan to start going into the distance. He needs to keep pace with him, you feel. Gambled a little piece there that he could get a thick contact on the pack and get cover on this red behind the green, which he didn't get. Maybe playing another player, he might not play that, but sometimes against a Sullivan, try and force a little piece. that gamble hasn't paid off. Oh, <laughs> what a red. Still needs a good black here, it's like cut back. Oh, I thought that might drop, but no. No. Yeah, from what we've seen this week, I think we just presumed it would just slide in. Maybe that cloth's getting a little bit worn. As likely to slide in, but you'd be disappointed. A massive let off from Anthony there. Well, this is where he needs now to, to take advantage. That could have been 4 2 there. One. Not quite put there if he's not on the black. He could hit that as hard as he liked. All he had to do was just get away from the reds. Obviously, the black over the pocket. There's nothing to be gained by trying to be precise there. Again, need to come off the side cushion and try and hit the black. That red close to the cushion looks to be in the way. Again, 
He's looking at that. Probably need a little bit of side off the cushion to avoid the red. And that bit of side will that then take it away from the black. Black. Well, here we go. Oh dear. Yeah, I think if that red to the right corner that Ronnie's probably about to play, if that wasn't there, I think he would have pot the black. Of course, any contact on the black would have pot it. Well, obviously, it was the previous shot that did him in, but uh, it was a chance to, to punish the, the Miss Black from O'Sullivan, and now what? the punishment might come his way. Just to say, speaking of punishment, Dekchara new 5-1 over Barry Hawkins now, so on the cusp of a great win there. Maguire in day 3-3. Three, three. Ding's gone 3-2 upon Pang Shenzhou in the other matches. Yeah, it could well prove to be a pivotal passage of play, those couple of shots. But Anthony has said... It's not that he's going to be disheartened too much or give up. But all of a sudden, from two all, you're playing O'Sullivan in the best of seven and you're giving him a two-frame lead. With the greatest will in the world, that might be just too much of a lead to give him. Well, not least because when he missed the black O'Sullivan, he sort of gave the pocket a stare. He was a bit disbelieving himself, I think. He thought he was going to drop in, but, you know, 20 seconds later, he's back at the table. But also, I think it appeared that it couldn't possibly go wrong. There was no hope. Hunting just to pot a simple red, 14. scatter the reds, guaranteed on the black was as good a chance as you could possibly get. 22. Yeah, I think the two reds Pots the bottom one. He would have clipped off the other one. Even there, he didn't want to take. Pot on the end there. Just the white was awkward distance away from the cushion. 31. Didn't know whether to put his hand on the table or on the rail. And ended up playing with a longer bridge. Made the pot a fraction more difficult. Just went in the side of the pocket. But he's back in perfect position on the blue here now. Field crisis averted and feel sure he'll go on and win the frame now. 36. Of course, if we thought this frame was important for Anthony, I feel sure the next frame is must win. 37. Yes, and the mistakes that O'Sullivan is making, and there haven't been many, but the ones he's made have not gone punished. We saw that very clearly in this frame. doesn't always happen, but you do tend to feel if you're playing O'Sullivan, you literally have to play mistake-free snooker, which just in turn just tends to lead to mistakes, because straight away you're under pressure. Just feel there's no margin for error. 51. Fifty-two. Just feel there's certain frames you won't even get a chance on. He's going to win comfortably. It's the other frames you could and should be winning that you have to win. 59. Well, he's going to win this frame, O'Sullivan, if he pots this red, which he's duly done. So that Miss Black is all consigned to history now for him. Had no impact on the frame. McGill didn't uh, take the chance. He didn't get on the black. Didn't pot it off the cushion. And now he's facing a big seventh frame, clearly, to just stay in touch here. Sixty-eight. 
Eighty-three, eighty-nine. 89. Oh, he got close to it, didn't he? But he killed the frame off, that's the key thing. They're 89. Could have gone wrong on another day when he missed the initial black off the first red. But O'Sullivan has made his move. He leads 4-2. 4-2 it is to Ronnie O'Sullivan in the last 16 here in Tianjin. So this seventh frame, clearly a big one for both players. McGill trying to keep pace. O'Sullivan, if he gets to five, becomes a heavy favourite to complete victory. Hopefully the referee will <laughs> will return at some point. We can get this frame underway. Hope we're not disturbing him. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just sorted something out there, but uh, yeah, big frame this. It's not quite panic stations for Anthony. You know, if he can win this frame four three, just keep in touch. I just feel if he gets chances, he's going to have to score he a bit heavier than he has been. So it just adds to the pressure. But a funny old break off that. The red is coming towards this middle pocket. Yeah, an absolute gift here for Anthony straight away. Doesn't look like there's a problem. In Without being too flippant or taking it for granted, you'd have to say Anthony playing Ronnie in this form. This is a chance. Yes, I mean, it feels like O'Sullivan has done the heavy hitting. The 133, 54, 68, 89. McGill made an 82. It's only really big break, that was in frame four. Yeah, nice shot from Anthony there, straight away took the opportunity of getting on this red beside the black. Once the black was able to pot in both pockets, position to play front would have been trickier. Frustration there from Anthony. Obviously got a kick. Again, would like to be a lot closer to this red. Probably a bit of a better angle. He's got to pot the red and go into the reds. Could work out, of course, well in his favour. You can just get away from the reds and beyond the black. Well, it's uh, going to be a test in black as well. And everything's a test at the moment, not least the scoreline. Yeah, with that kick, because he was a little bit further away from the red, just made the positional aspect a little bit trickier to be very precise. Yeah, and this will take a little bit of potting and the next red is not absolutely guaranteed either. And everything's just compounded by the fact that he knows how important it is. 
this opportunity he's got. Well, another one that maybe on day one might have gone in, but not today. Yeah, just a byproduct of not just losing position, but also that extra bit of pressure he is under. Desperate to try and make a break and win the frame one visit. This time not punished. Yeah, he'll certainly be relieved. When he put that red, obviously with the black over the pocket, Would've given him an opportunity. safety bringing the white back down and of course he just had to pot it with the black waiting over the pocket for him just got to be a little bit mindful here to make sure and pot in the back that he gets away from the jaws of the pocket doesn't get stuck Surprising how often that happens, even when the ball is over the pocket and unmissable, that you don't get position. Played, I think, to go into the pack. Just obviously misjudged the cannon from it. This is the thing, he's getting quite a few chances, isn't he? But they're not really coming to much, I'm afraid. Say he's played bad today. His application's been good, but just hasn't been as clinical as he would have liked. And playing O'Sullivan, you're not going to get chance after chance. They're going to be few and far between. So the ones you do get, try and capitalise as much as you can. Frustration with him, caught that thicker than he wanted. Ramrod straight Q action there. And the contact on the white, beautiful. Shot that gives you an awful lot of confidence. Not that he necessarily needs it. Four. A bit short of pace, was trying to get on the red that's below the cluster of four. Excellent pot for Manton there. Q 
execute that nicely as well. Just got past the red. Six. So be a little bit careful here, just cutting this back. You always the danger when you're playing them slow like that to miss them thick, particularly because he was afraid of the white getting away and wanted to maintain to be top side of the blue. I'm afraid it's becoming the story though, isn't it? McGill getting in, he's getting in a lot actually, and then just not pressing on. kind of lost his way fractionally. Affected his confidence. And of course, on the other side, Three. if he doesn't capitalise on the chances, that just increases the confidence of his opponent. Just thought how well how Sullivan cued that yellow left-handed. The fuss that was made for when he first started playing left-handed all those years ago, it seems ludicrous now, doesn't it? Yeah, Elaine Roth was <laughs> murder over at the time. <laughs> And more and more players now seem to switch hands at various times, don't they, as well? It's become a thing it never used to be, really. Yeah, I'd say there's most young players looking to be prospects in the game can probably make a 50 break with the left hand, the norm. When it just wasn't, when I was young, just wasn't done. You'd get given out if you did Eleven. even <laughs> attempt. It's also the thing with Ronnie, it's noticeable when he does play left-handed, his cue action is the exact same. Doesn't compromise because it's his left hand. say Ronnie's well, lost as well, but there's definitely been a bit of a lull in the match. The standard of play has dropped. It just adds to the importance of this frame. Anthony I up this long red. The corner pocket. an easy pot to be fair. That wasn't an easy pot either. <laughs> yeah, great shot. Yeah, I mean, when McGill went back to his seat, you think, well, he'd be happy enough because at one stage he looked like he might knock a red on towards the middle, but, you know, Sullivan has knocked that in beautifully. So aggressive. Chance or half a chance. Eight. Tries to maximise as much as he can. Nine. Okay, perfect angle in the blue here to play a cannon into the pink. Just 10 ahead, so we'll need that red that's closest to the middle pocket. It's away from the cushion though, so every opportunity we have to come off the cushion and play a cannon on it. Particularly if the pink was on its spot, or even where it is now. 
if you can't get an angle on it. It's always the second option of playing a double on it. He's had a few doubles uh, in this match, not all 36. very successful. But that was brilliantly played, and it should have won in the frame. 37. Got himself in a great position to make it. Uh, just, uh, well, trying to lay the snooker, I don't think he's actually got it behind the black. I mean, that will annoy him, for sure, because it just slightly opens the door. Yeah, but careless there. It was noticeable on the blue before the red. He left himself low on the red. So in playing the red, he was bringing the white down towards the black, making it as a shot to nothing. Still a great shot to get it. But Anthony's more than capable of getting two snookers on the colours. His long potting has been very good, you've got to say, today. And that yellow going in, all right, he's put himself in a snooker, but as long as he hits this green, you feel that's got to be 5 2. Two. Well, McGill, I suppose after that experience in Belfast, you can't blame him for giving it a go, having won that frame and, and ultimately the match against Robin McGuigan. Also, the fact that more or less guaranteed a snooker from the green probably felt it was worth one, one go. Foul. And Tony McGill, four. Well, it's true that stranger things have happened. They happened in the last, in the last tournament with McGill, so he's got one there. Yeah, there's always that temptation when you need snookers that no matter what shot you have, no matter where the balls are, you try and get a snooker. You've been better making sure you just got the green safe. Sometimes you just have to bide your time, play a safety shot or two and just wait for an ideal opportunity to get the snooker. I'd say as well, I mean, some players, I think, sometimes play on, they almost feel obligated. I think McGill, he would be the sort who enjoys playing on. You know, the challenge is there, isn't it? And Mark Selby, obviously, is, is similar. And, you know, he got that result in Belfast, so why not? Yeah, nearly an opportunity for him to show off his skills and his ring craft. And his double ability. <laughs> well, better in the pocket, I guess, than near the pocket for O'Sullivan, who was sort of coming to the table there. You mightn't be able to do it here, but you could probably argue the case rather than trying to get two snookers on the brown. Pot the brown and blue. Take your chance to just get one on the pink. Obviously to force a respot. And 
Tony Maguire. Black's in a nice enough position to potentially get a... I just feel it's unlikely there's going to be two snookers that Ronnie won't be able to escape from. Well, of course, it doesn't help being in one yourself. Finish the contacts. Yeah, we're going to be keen just to pop this brown and just put this frame to bed. Get on to the next one. Yeah, so it's not been, again, flawless. And McGill has had chances, and that will be the frustration. He's just not taking them. For Sullivan. Again, has kept his discipline, kept his focus, and he's enhanced his lead nice. to three, needing one more, and he'll be in the quarterfinals of this international championship. 15. Frank, McGill up against it here. He needs to win the last four if he is to progress here in Tianjin. Ronnie O'Sullivan leading 5-2. One more needed. So McGill really up against it now, 5-2 down. And what will frustrate him is, you know, if he'd just been completely outplayed with lots of big breaks, that's one thing. But he has had openings, he's had chances, and he's not been taking enough of them. Yeah, slight demise since the interval. I don't think he could have predicted it at all. Ronnie has been at his brilliant best, just been more clinical, but Anthony has had enough chances. Ronnie has been at his brilliant best, just been more clinical, but Anthony has had enough chances. It would generate enough power into the pack, just got a glance on them. But yeah, 35 ahead. Hopefully play telling safety. Ronio Sally, Meantime, out of table three, the comeback's on for the Hawk. It was 5-1 to Tepchar and New, it's now 5-4. So Barry Hawkins, three on the spin and some big breaks from him as well. Well, that could have been it, I guess, had that gone in, but not to be.
suddenly these pockets don't seem quite so big, do they? You know, you've got to be so precise, obviously, with a shot like that. He obviously had to play it with pace. Trying to make it a bit of a shot to nothing, bring the white pack. <coughs> Just to be careful here, if you're playing the safety to bulk, he doesn't leave the red to the left corner. Looking for cover with the blue. Again, I think it's the same problem here. Not just getting the white to travel 24 feet back down the table, but can he get cover? If he could have, he might have even just nestled up to that red of the corner. Just a difficult shot. There was a lot of pressure on that. In this extraordinary career that continues at the top level after 30 years, Anthony McGill did have his chances, just didn't, in the end, take enough of them. And O'Sullivan will face his fellow Essex man, Ali Carter, for a place in the semi-finals here in Tianjin. Can he land his first ranking title since he won his seventh world title in 2022? Well, he's in the last eight. He's the winner, 6-2.